Owen Powers' home debut, his first game in Buffalo tonight. Sabres host the St. Louis Blues. We'll get into the nitty-gritty of tonight's matchup here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Your Locked On Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including our YouTube channel. Go subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoy watching our show there. We do lots of film breakdowns, especially after games, looking at the goals. I don't know what I did on yesterday's show to where I was breaking down a Sabres 4-3 to three win that they actually won 5-2, to two, got the score wrong, don't know what happened there. I knew the score was 5-2 because I had a bunch of bets on that that ended up going the wrong direction. Uh, but uh, tonight's game, the St. Louis Blues are in town. The Sabres play the Blues, and the highlight of this game will be Owen Powers' home debut. So we'll talk about that a little bit, uh, what we could see in terms of a crowd atmosphere, and also what's going on with the blues. And of course we'll uh, look at some of the betting lines. I've got another parlay for tonight's game, a three leg parlay on Sabres blues, same game parlay that I'll, uh, that I'll hit you up with a little bit later on. Um, we'll start things off though today with, uh, of course our Twitter accounts. I'm at sneaky Joe sports uh, at JR Hanskin for Jordan and at locked on Sabres for the podcast account. We'll see how long that's a thing. Elon Musk. I saw today offered 43, $53 billion dollars to buy Twitter 100% and make it private. Uh, I'm anxious. I'm worried. I mean, you guys kind of a wild card. You never know if he'll just take Twitter offline if he wants. Seems like a lot of money just to, you know, I'm going to get rid of Twitter. But he's the richest man in the world. So I am obsessed with Twitter. And maybe it'd be a good thing for me if it went away. And I don't think it's going to go away because I think he's doing it as a business thing. But that happened this morning. Uh, and that's been consuming my attention, uh, waking up here on uh, Thursday morning. But anyway, Sabres and Blues, it's a 7.07 puck drop. It's just after 7 o'clock, and I'm going to the game. I'm going with a couple of buddies. I think this is going to be one of the marquee games on the Sabres calendar to attend. You had RJ Knight, which has to be number one. The place was sold out. Everyone was there, standing ovations, great atmosphere from beginning to end. They won the game. It was a good, good hockey game up and down the ice against Nashville. RJ out under the ice after like that is a clear number one for this season. Number two has got to be Eichel's return because of the booing that created an atmosphere. It was at the time, the largest crowd we had seen this season. They won the game. Peyton Krebs and Alex Tuck, the guys we got back from the Eichel trade, had scored goals. I mean, it was just a beautiful night to be in there. Um, and then Eichel gave you the little snippet after that made it even more special that you, you flustered him during that game. So that was probably number two. And I guess if you're counting the Heritage Classic as a home game, that would be number three. But even while it was technically a home game, I don't think a lot of Sabre fans went to that. It was really more of a Leafs home game in Hamilton, Ontario. So I'm thinking this is number three. Owen Powers' first game as a Buffalo Sabre in Buffalo in front of his home crowd. I think that's a pretty cool night to be at. And he was really awesome. I think he was awesome against Toronto. Uh, he was stable. He was solid. He made crisp passes. He made that lured that Ilya Mikheyev into that giveaway on that two-on-one. And he did not look like a guy that was playing his first NHL game to me. He looked like a guy that was playing his 100th NHL game. So we'll see how much he's able to build on that. We'll see how much more offense we get from his game. It looked like he wanted to jump up in place. And I wonder if Don Granado will be like, hey, man, you're good. You're good. Don't, don't, because what Power was doing against Toronto was he would get ahead of steam going through the neutral zone. And then he would kind of slow up and think, eh, maybe I should go back and make sure that I'm not, you know, I'm not going to give my defense partner a two on one back the other way. And as a, as your first game, you know, you might feel you might feel an inclination to be a little bit more conservative. And I wonder in the second game, especially Don Granado being the type of coach he is, he wants these guys jumping up in the play. He's want these he wants these guys being aggressive. I wonder if he'll go to Owen and say, "Hey, this game when you're flying through the neutral zone like that, keep going, 
Keep going. Join the rush. Make it a three on two. Make it a three on one. Don't be afraid to get in there and don't always feel like you've got to be, you know, covering up on the back end. We'll we'll cover it for you. We'll cover for you. We've got veteran forwards. We've got Dylan Cousins. We've got guys that are going to cover for you. This ain't Ralph Kruger's team. <laughs> I'm sure he won't say that. But this, in, in essence, this ain't Ralph Kruger's team. You have the freedom to jump up in the play if you want. And I hope we see more of that from power because he did look a little hesitant to go all out in that regard in, in Toronto. So hopefully we get that against the Blues tonight. Uh, the Sabres line combinations will look as they pretty much always have for tonight's game. Tage Thompson centering Alex Tuck and Jeff Skinner. Casey Middlestat centering Victor Olofsson and Rasmus Asplin. John Hayden re-entered the lineup in place of Cody Eakin uh, in their last couple of games. So, or yeah, the last two games. So Dylan Cousins will center Vinny Hinostroza and John Hayden. I can't stand John Hayden in this lineup. I mean, I get not wanting to call up Jack Quinn or JJ Paterka and disrupt their development of Rochester and Rochester's in a playoff race right now. I get it, but... Anything that's not John Hayden in that lineup. I mean, that is just a waste of a roster spot if there's ever been one. Uh, I pr- I saw him do something that I only see like Mike players do or like squirt players do, which is use the boards as your breaks. He was going so fast that I don't think he thought he could he could hockey stop f- fast enough because he's not a good enough skater. So he like crashed into the boards as his stopper. I mean, that's like something that like little kids do. And that's what John Hayden did in one play against Toronto. I can't, I can't stand him on the ice for the Sabres. And I hope that, uh, well, hope I'm, I'm assuming this is the end of that relationship. I can't believe he would be back next season. Uh, but he's on a line with Dylan Cousins and Vinny Hinostroza. Peyton Krebs continues to center Kyle Poso and Zemgis Girgensons on the blue line. It appears as though we're going to keep with what we had last game. Matias Samuelson on the left. Rasmus Dahlin continues to play on his right. I thought Dahlin played really well on the right side. I thought he he is someone that is so good on his backhand that he is the most capable of playing on his right side. And it opens him up to do a lot more offensively when he's on his offside. Now that he's kind of built up that confidence over the last three seasons, and especially this last year, this last calendar year, uh, I think Dahlin is um, more than capable of playing on the right side that he played before he got to the NHL. So I think that would be a really, really interesting way to go about this blue line for a long time is him playing on his offside. And I really, I'm rooting for that to go well. I am really rooting for that to go well because that will allow for the possibility of this top four, Darlene and Samuelson, Power and Yoki Haru, being the top four of this blue line for a long time. And just like keeping them together, keeping that, core group together. Uh, Samuelson's been really strong his rookie year. Darlene, we know, has had a great year. Power looked really strong in his first game. And I'll give Henry Okiharu looked really good against Toronto. Might have been his best game of the year. And I don't think it's a coincidence, by the way, that came when playing with Owen Power. But I think Okiharu played really strong. He's had a very turbulent season. Um, I'm still optimistic about him because of the first round draft pedigree, because he's a very good passer. He's a good skater. Uh, I think the style of defenseman he is works in today's NHL, but he has been very inconsistent this year. But I'm still hopeful that he's a legitimate top four defenseman uh, for a long time. And what that means, those four sticking together for tonight's game means Jacob Bryson will be down with uh, Casey Fitzgerald. I like Casey Fitzgerald, by the way. I don't talk about him much. I, I don't necessarily like him in terms of the skill level and how good he is, but I like that little flair. I like getting into it with uh, the other team. I like, uh, I, I guess I like the fights. I like more, you know, the scrums after the whistle that he kind of fires up. I, I think he plays with a lot of emotion and I want him to match that in terms of his play. And I'm not sure he's able to do that. I think he's an AHL defenseman to, to be, to be frank, but in a lost season like this, I enjoy watching him. I'll just, just put it, put it that way. Uh, tonight's goaltender. I don't think we have at time of recording. Um, let me double check real quick. Yeah, no, unconfirmed. So we don't know if it's going to be Craig Anderson or Dustin Tukarski. They had a night off here, so maybe they go back with Anderson, but, um, we'll see. Billy Huso. Well, we'll get into the blues in a second. He don't know if he's going to start. He is, he is their number one goaltender. Uh, he's good. I like him for the Sabres maybe next year. Um, we'll get into the blues. We'll talk about the blues, what they are in the standings. I think they're kind of fraudulent 
going into the playoffs. I'll tell you why when we come back, and uh, we'll look at what their lineup looks like for tonight's game, and also how Ryan O'Reilly's doing. Kind of a down year for Ryan O'Reilly. We'll uh, compare O'Reilly's stats with Tage Thompson's stats. That'll be fun. We'll do that when we come back here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. This episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. I love I love the idea of cooking more than I love cooking. I, I want to be good at cooking. I watch Hell's Kitchen a lot. Um, and I'm like, I want to be able to make that. And HelloFresh is kind of perfect because you're doing everything. You know, you're cooking it. But they've laid it all out for you. They've pre-portioned everything from the seasoning to the ingredients. They give you a very detailed instruction sheet to go step by step. Very easy to read and to follow. So you feel like you're cooking it, but they're really helping you along the way. It's almost like they're really cooking it for you, but you are doing it. And it, I think it makes it taste better, honestly, when when you're doing it and you're eating it at the end of the day. Um so I highly recommend HelloFresh. When I saw they were coming on as a sponsor, I was super excited because I've been a customer of theirs for uh, for a couple of years now. Um, I there's like different like meatball recipes that I would recommend. Um, you know, like pork chops and stuff. Like a lot of the 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 meat, the protein recipes that they have on there, I think are really good. Everyone that I've really ever tried. And if you go to HelloFresh.com right now, slash Hello. HelloFresh.com slash LockedOn16. That's the website. HelloFresh.com slash LockedOn16. If you use the code LockedOn16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Again, HelloFresh.com slash LockedOn16 and use the code LockedOn16. And there's my alarm that is set for some reason. Anyways, uh, check it out today and uh, you I guarantee that you'll, uh, you'll enjoy it and it's really good food. Uh, welcome back to the Locked On Sabres podcast with Joe DiBiase. Uh, thanks for making us your first listen every day, free and available on all platforms. Hit that YouTube subscribe button, especially if you're watching on YouTube. You don't ha- you don't have to make a special trip out of your way if you're listening in your car right now. To especially if you're driving, don't don't do it now. Um, but if you're watching on YouTube, we would greatly appreciate hitting that hitting that subscribe button. The Blues tonight, Sabres and Blues. Owen Powers' first game in front of the Buffalo Sabres crowd. Uh, and they get the Blues. Uh, Tage Thompson, revenge game, numero five, whatever it may be. Always a good opportunity, I think, to show off what he's become to Blues fans. Um, 96 points. 96 points the St. Louis Blues have this season. They are tied for second in the Central Division with the Minnesota Wild. They are going to play the Minnesota Wild in the first round of the playoffs. It's just going to come down to who gets home ice, I think, personally. The Wild are going to throttle the Blues in the first round. I think Kirill Kaprizov and, you know, Matthew Dumba and uh, Joel Erickson Eck, um, Matthew Boldy, the rookie that we talked about for a potential Eichel trade in the summer, has been really good as a rookie. Minnesota is a, is a fast, fun, young team for the first time really in their franchise history. Now, the Blues have won six in a row. Coming into tonight against the Sabres, they have won six in a row. But, little fluky, little fluky. On the season as a whole, they rank 25th in the NHL in expected goals for. 25th. Why are they in third place in their division? Because they get saves. And their shooting percentage is, it's through the roof. In fact, their PDO combination of expect of uh, save percentage and shot percentage, which as I've mentioned on the show plenty of times, I always like to point out that PDO is kind of a stat that measures how lucky you are. The blues are number one in the NHL in PDO. Now to be fair, the wild are number two. So I shouldn't say maybe the wild will throttle them, but the blues are number one in the NHL in PDO. I think they're pretty lucky 25th in the league and expected goals for percentage. I think Actually, expected goals for, I think the Wild rank better, even though they're very similar in PDO. Um, Minnesota, Minnesota, seventh. Yeah, so power play really must be the difference between those two teams because Minnesota is seventh in in expected goals for. But I think the Blues are kind of pretenders. I think they're going to get bounced in the first round. I do not see them as a legitimate Stanley Cup contender. The second round matchup for wild or blues will be against the Colorado avalanche, assuming the avalanche get through whoever they do in the wild card round. 
And I think the Wild pose a much bigger threat to Colorado than St. Louis does. I think St. Louis could get swept by uh, by Colorado. Their leading scorers on the year, Vladimir Tarasenko, huge bounce back season from that major shoulder surgery injury that he's had the last two years that we thought may have derailed his career, but he's back. He's back 67 points in 66 games this year. Robert Thomas, who we once dreamed about as being a part of a, an O'Reilly trade, he's having a breakout year, 66 points in 63 games. And Jordan Cairo, another former O'Reilly trade prospect type, uh, 65 points in 65 games. Pavel Buchnevich, 62 points in 64 games. It's not the old same cast and crew that are leading the way for St. Louis this season. Even e Ivan Barbashev, 53 points in 72 games. Those are their leading scorers. Notice their top five I just mentioned, no O'Reilly, no Brandon Saad, no Braden Shen, no David Perron. Like they're, These veteran guys have taken a step back for St. Louis, and the youth movement has really begun to take over with Thomas and Kairou and Buchnevich and Barbashev. Um, O'Reilly, Ryan O'Reilly, this season, is sitting on 17 goals and 31 assists, 48 points in 69 games played. So he's going to be a 50-point player. But looking back on the O'Reilly trade, which was the biggest L in Sabre history for a trade through three seasons, the tide is starting to turn. Because while O'Reilly has 48 points in 69 games, Tage Thompson, as we all know, He's having a breakout season, 33 goals, 59 points in 71 games. He's flirting with a 70 point season while O'Reilly is going to struggle to get to 60. So Thompson at this point, this season, better season than O'Reilly. And from, if from here on out, O'Reilly is going to kind of, you know, float around as a second pair guy, second line guy. He's not the elite, you know, two-way centerman, Selkie Trophy candidate type guy that he once was. Uh, and Thompson's going to be a legitimate 30-goal scorer year to year here as a centerman. Then it, it, it'll never be called a win. It'll, that trade will never be called a win because O'Reilly won the Cup and the Conn Smythe. But that, it's not going to be a loss for the Sabres. It, it's more and more looking like it's not going to be this giant L for the Sabres. And O'Reilly's down season kind of points to that a little bit. And Thompson's amazing season points to that as well uh we will look at the betting lines for tonight's game in just a moment here on locked on sabers this episode's brought to you by built bar have you tried the puffs if you haven't get to that brownie batter puff because it is it is a, it is literally a brownie batter flavored marshmallow infused with protein and it's covered in chocolate i mean it is it's literally like eating a candy bar but they are obviously much healthier than a candy bar. They fit for my diet with the keto diet because I'm only I'm limited to 20 carbs a day and most built bars contain only 4 net carbs, 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to the candy bar which you're going to get, you know, 250 calories, 30 grams of sugar and dozens of net carbs. New this flavor, white chocolate cookies and cream. I've not gotten my hands on that yet, but I am very much looking forward to it. Um Built Bar has a, a unique way of getting me to like bars of flavors that I don't like. I don't like coconut ever. I and anything. I hate coconut. But the coconut brownie built bar, I love for whatever reason. I don't like mint, but the shamrock shake uh built bar that's out. Love that. So they are they're so good that they're even getting me to like flavors that I don't typically like. Go to built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15. You'll get 15% off your orders. Use the code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. All right, Jody Biasi, one last segment here on Locked on Sabres. Let's look at some of the betting lines for tonight's game. I've got a got a fun parlay going for tonight's game. A three-leg parlay I just missed against Toronto. I had Rasmus Asplund as an anytime goal scorer. Who in the world bets on Rasmus Asplund to score? I did, but I missed because while I did also have the Sabres on the money line to beat Toronto, I had under six and a half goals. What am I doing? Under six and a half goals, Toronto Buffalo. Two teams that play a wide open style. So for tonight, I've learned my lesson. I am switching to Sabres money line over six and a half goals. And I'm betting on Owen Power as an anytime goal scorer. Now, Owen Power is not a goal scorer, but 
looking at the player props for tonight's game at Bet Online, our partners over at BetOnline.net. Owen Power as an anytime goal scorer is at plus 1,000. Plus 900, actually. Wow, that line has actually moved since I bet it this morning. So, okay, uh, plus 900 is what Owen Power to score is at now. Let me just read the other players. And I mentioned him wanting to jump up in the rush. I think we might see more of that today. Jumping up in the rush. Maybe he gets some power play time. Plus 900 to score. Who else is plus 900? Matias Samuelson. How about Robert Bortuzzo at plus 1,000? Casey Fitzgerald at plus 1,100. Will Butcher at plus 1,300. Is he even... Is he even playing tonight? Jacob Bryson at plus 1,700. He has one goal on the season. Um, whereas the guys who have better odds than uh, Owen Power, Cody Eakin, plus 600. I don't think he's playing tonight. Anders Bjork, plus 700. John Hayden at plus 600. Really? We're betting on John Hayden over Owen Power? Give me Owen Power uh, on this parlay tonight to score. And I like him as my favorite player prop because those, those odds are way down. He should be up closer. Maybe not quite where Darlene is at, but maybe somewhat close. Uh, tonight's game, the Sabres are plus 175, by the way, on the money line. And, you know, I like the Sabres on the money line. They've been playing well. Uh, I think the Blues are a little bit fraudulent, as I mentioned, with the PDO stat and the expected goals for. Part of the reason why I think tonight's a good, t- a good time to take advantage of it is I think Betcha the Books are overreacting to the Blues' six-game win streak. Um, they're hot. They're hot right now. So that's, that is your risk though. They are, you're betting against a team that's on a six game win streak. If you bet the Sabres to beat the blues over under six and a half goals, minus minus one ten for both the over and the under and the puck line minus one and a half uh, for the blues is plus plus one fifteen, plus a goal and a half for the Sabres is minus minus one thirty five. All right. That's it for us. Thanks everybody for listening. Uh, enjoy Sabres and blues. Uh, if you're going to the game, uh, have fun, cheer on Owen power, which I'm sure he'll get a pretty raucous ovation. Uh, and I'll talk to you. We'll talk to you tomorrow here on locked on Sabres. Be sure to subscribe, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel. We're trying to get to a thousand by the end of the month. Uh, thanks for making us your first listen every day. Go make your second listen. Locked on fantasy hockey host.